Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of this new video card from Galaxy. This is the GeForce GTX 670. It's the overclocked edition, and it features the GK104 GPU from NVIDIA. So let's take a look at the box for some outside-of-the-box information. With the GTX 670, you get a 2 gigabyte frame buffer, and uh, that is GDDR5 memory. It's clocked at 6.0 gigabits per second. It runs at 1500 megahertz and it's 256-bit interface. That gives you a total memory bandwidth of 192 gigabytes per second. Uh, so some screaming fast memory on this card. You also get a three-year extended warranty from Galaxy. Uh, this is the GC version. It's factory overclocked, and it also features a fully custom cooling design as well as a custom PCB they designed for the 670, which I'll show you once we get into the box. Of course, you get DirectX 11 compliance, SLI capability, physics capability. You can also run 3D vision, so you can do 3D gaming if you have the monitor that supports it. You can also run multiple monitors off of this same card, which is kind of shown right there, multi-display. So you can set up three monitors for surround gaming, and then you can even add a fourth companion monitor where you can pull up uh, an instant messenger or web browser or something like that. Uh, so you can actually run up to four displays off of this single card, which is just pretty awesome. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for the outside of the box. Actually, though, wait, where'd it go? I lost it. Here it is. Uh, I did want to point out some of the features you get um, because the GTX 670 does get a lot of the same features that you saw. Uh, with the GTX 680, such as uh, GPU Boost. You also get support for TXAA, which is a new anti-aliasing method from NVIDIA. Also adaptive vertical sync, which makes sure that you don't lose frames if your frame rate drops below the frame rate of your monitor. Uh, surround technology, and then all this other stuff listed right there. So next up, we will take a look. Well, we're going to look at accessories first, and we'll save the card for last. But uh, inside the box here, you have an intention customers. Register your Galaxy graphics card, and then you can make, take advantage of that three-year manufacturer's warranty that we saw on the front of the box. Here's the video card. I'm very excited to take a look since this is a custom design from Galaxy. We're going to delay it for just a few moments, though, so we can cover all of our accessories first. So inside the box here, we have a uh, sort of standard DVI to VGA adapter. So if you have an older monitor, you can use that to plug it in. I recommend not using an older monitor for the VGA adapter because it's not going to be as good of a picture. So get a new monitor if you get this card, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you also get a couple power adapters here. So these are will both take a couple of your Molex plugs, route them over to uh, a 6-pin PCI Express plug and an 8-pin PCI Express plug. Those are the power requirements of this card. You need a 6 and an 8-pin. It's overclocked, it's custom designed, so it's a little bit more than the standard 670, which uses two 6-pin power connectors. Uh, you also have the GTX series user's manual right there from Galaxy with the table of contents and some requirements and unpacking and general installation instructions. You get sort of a quick guide here that you can fold out. It's got some more diagrams and stuff for installing the card. I know it's upside down. I don't care. And finally, you have your Galaxy uh, graphics card driver installation disc. Uh, this is going to have some really early drivers for the card, so especially since this is a new video card, you're going to want to download the latest drivers from either the Galaxy website or the NVIDIA website to make sure you get the best, best performance and compatibility out of this card as possible. Let's look at the card now. So here is a look at the Galaxy GTX 670 Overclocked Edition. As you can see, they have a completely custom cooler designed here for the GPU itself as well as all the power delivery uh, NAND modules and that sort of thing. And flipping over to the back, they've also designed a custom PCB to handle all the hardware that's installed. So uh, first off, let me talk about some of the specs on the card. So the GPU, which is located right under here, has a base clock and a boost clock. So um, just to give a little history here, uh, base clock is sort of what the GPU will run at by default. And then given uh, the, a appropriate thermal environment, that being if the GPU is not overheating, it will initiate a boost clock, which is kind of like an automatic overclock for your GPU. It'll run at a higher frequency. Uh, this particular GTX 670, since it's overclocked, uh, is running at a base clock of 1006 megahertz, and that's as compared to the uh, reference base clock of 915, so almost a 100 megahertz boost on the base clock. And the boost clock on this is 1058 megahertz, and that's as compared to the reference GTX 670 boost clock of 980, so uh, you get a nice boost there as well. Now, one thing I was noticing about those numbers is actually that's the same as a 680. So this is still the same GK104 GPU uh, that, the G that the GTX 680 uses. And because it's an overclock card with the custom cooling solution, they've actually upped the base clock and the boost clock to the same specs as a 
stock GTX 680. So you get essentially the same speeds here, and uh, I can't verify at this point whether or not that will be borne out in benchmarking on this card, but you get essentially the same clock frequencies. Uh, the only true difference apart from, uh, well, the only true difference is that you get a few le fewer CUDA cores. You get 1,344 CUDA cores in the 670. That's as compared to 1,536 in the 680. So uh, that's going to reflect in benchmarks a little bit, but um, you're getting a lot of video card here, especially as compared to the 680 uh, for that price and performance. Anyway, uh, that's about all for the uh, specs that I wanted to point out, but let's talk about the actual physical design of the card. So as you can see here on the top, they have a dual cooling fan solution here. They have a very attractive uh, aluminum metal covering that's going around the entire cooling solution. So top to bottom right there, you can see Galaxy logo up at the top, GeForce GTX 670 down here at the bottom. It even says Kepler right there, code name of the GPU architecture. Uh, it's got some plastic reinforcements around the side, and there's actually some LEDs that will turn on to give this car to make this card light up when it's turned on. So a uh, pretty cool design there. If we look at it from the side here, you can see they have four nice fat heat pipes that are running from the actual contact plate that's on the GPU right there, uh, going out to the radiators, which are located beneath the two fans. Also, if you look in here from the side, you can see the NAND modules, which are uh, situated fairly close to the GPU, so they're going to get plenty of airflow. Uh, one really cool design decision that was made here that you can kind of see is there's actually gaps all along the PCB right here. So there's gaps right there. There's a few more gaps over here on this side. So that's actually going to allow some additional airflow from the front of the GPU where you have more airflow coming from the fans to the back of the GPU. It's also going to allow some direct airflow uh, for your power delivery here. So if we look again from the side, as you can see, there's an additional... Uh, there's an additional heat sink that's right on top of your VRMs right here, so your, uh, your, your chokes also are situated to where those gaps are right in between each one, so it's going to give you some fresh air over those, keep your power delivery uh, area nice and cool, and that's going to give you more stable overclocks, especially when it goes into that boost clock, automatic overclocking mode. Uh, it's going to make sure that your components are within a temperature range to be able to do that. Let's move on to power delivery again. Uh, we're talking about the actual power connectors here. So you have a six pin PCI Express power connector and an eight pin PCI Express power connector. Uh, and Galaxy is recommending a 550 watt minimum power supply for a full computer system with this video card installed. I typically like to go a little bit beyond the uh, recommended power supply wattage, um, but just bear that in mind if you are gonna be installing this on an existing system. I uh, also wanted to point out up here, you have of course your SLI connectors. Uh, this card is uh, fully compatible with SLI, so if you run a, want to run uh, two, three, or four card uh, SLI, four-way SLI configurations, you can. This being a two-slot card, as you can see, uh, a, in most motherboards that support uh, quad SLI, you should be able to fit all four cards. i also like to point out that it's open uh, along both sides here, so as that air is being pushed over the, uh, the uh, parts of the video card that are going to get hot, it's going to be ejecting it out all sides. So especially in an SLI configuration, it's going to give some additional ventilation, particularly on this side of the card, uh, which is typically exposed when you have SLI set up like that. So um, overall, very uh, unique design for the card. I like the gaps in the PCB here on the back. Um, also want to point out, of course, the uh, actual video outs. So here are your two DVI outs. They're both dual-link DVI. Uh, upper one here is DVI-D, which is digital only. So if you're going to use that analog adapter, use it with the lower one, because this one doesn't have analog connections. Bottom one is DVI-I, so both the digital and analog outputs available through that. Both of those are dual-link, so they'll support higher resolutions, such as 2560 by 1600. And of course, you also got an HDMI 1.4A connector and a DisplayPort 1.2 connector. And finally on this bracket, as you can see, two slot bracket and you get some additional ventilation right there at the top. And here's just one more shot of a little bit of the design detail on the card. As you can see, you got a Galaxy logo along the uh, heatsink fan bracket on this side. Kind of has a little line that goes along there and, and it's got a squiggly at the end because they wanted to mix things up. If you flip around to this side, you can see they've uh, again done the Kepler logoing, which uh, you typically don't see. Usually the code names, uh, they don't use as much on the actual branding of the card, but again, uh, some nice detail there along the side on that metal bracket. I did have a chance to check and verify the LEDs on this card, so uh, just to clarify here, uh, the LEDs are not actually part of the fan, they're part of this logo down here at the end, so where you can see the GeForce, G the GeForce GTX 670 logo right there, 
lights up with a blue LED behind it, and it actually sort of pulses on and off while the card is in use. Uh, next up, we're going to get into some benchmarks we ran on the uh, on this Galaxy GTX 670. And I wanted to mention, um, when you're looking at reference specs for the cards, they will list a uh, base clock that the GPU runs at and also a boost clock that it can run at um, when it has the thermal environment permitting. Uh, the base clock for this card is 1006 uh, megahertz and the boost clock is 1058 megahertz. Now um, that is the exact same base and boost clock as the G GTX 680. Uh, but one other thing is that, that I've noticed is in practice, the boost clock will actually go up higher than the list of the specs. So the numbers I actually saw uh, while I was running the benchmarks on this card uh, for the boost clock were between 1085 and 1201.9. So 1201.9 over 1200 megahertz uh, effective GPU boost clock for this card. And it would actually maintain that speed uh, throughout the duration of the test. So uh, it can actually get up to a pretty high clock speed. Uh, the max temperature we saw with correlation to the high clock speed was 77 degrees Celsius, uh, which is well within range for a video card under full load. Uh, and even at 77 degrees Celsius, the max fan speed we ever saw was 43%. So it still stayed nice and quiet even under a full load at 2560 by 1600. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Galaxy GeForce GTX 670 video card featuring the GK104 Kepler GPU from NVIDIA. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.